everyone! This video is going to be a fun one, or at least I think so. Today I'm going to be taking miscellaneous holographic materials I've found around stores like Dollar Tree and Walmart, and I'll be using them in resin pieces. I'm going to make some jewelry and some magnets. Here's a fanny pack that I got at Walmart, and it was on clearance for $2.50. And then this is the pencil case that I also got at Walmart, and I think it was about $4 in that range. And this is a pencil case that I got at Dollar Tree, and it was a book. I've tried looking around in thrift stores for some material that I think would be cool, and I was really looking for like a child's backpack or something like that, but I live in a small town, and our thrift stores don't really compare to those in a big city. So if you want to try this and you live in a bigger city, may I suggest checking out the thrift stores? Um, I also feel like you can find stuff like this in fast fashion stores like Rue 21 or H&M. There's been a weird influx of 90s themed accessories and whatnot lately and fanny packs or belt bags, I think they're called at this point, are one of those. So yeah, I feel like you could check clearance places and find stuff like this pretty easy for pretty cheap. Here's a couple of pieces I've already made just so I could kind of experiment with the medium a little bit. Here's like a fairy and a flower with the fanny pack background. And then this is, I took a stainless steel little bezel and I'll leave the link for that and all of this stuff in the description box below. I took the bezel, I put the fanny pack stuff material in there and then I took this cool little sacred geometry kind of charm and fit it in there and I, I think it looks really cool. So we're going to be making one of these. We're going to be making some magnets and what I'm going to use for the magnets is I'm going to take, I have this heart mold that I'm going to use and then I'm going to have this circle mold which is really the same size and mold as this fairy and I'm also going to make well, as I previously said, I'm going to make one of these guys. So for the heart, what I'm going to use is I have this cute little fairy charm and then I have a little mushroom charm and I want to put the mushroom at the bottom and I want to put the fairy kind of near it. And then for that one, I'm going to use this really pretty rainbow-ish thing going on for that one. And for this circle one, I'm going to use the pink holographic pencil case that I got at the dollar store. And then I just have some little, they're little molecule charms, they're serotonin molecules. And then I have a little heart, so I'm just going to do something along those lines in that one. And then for the sacred geometry piece, I'll be using the fanny pack, like I said. I worked ahead a little bit and just poured some resin into these molds. There, there really wasn't much to it. You didn't miss much. I mixed up a batch of resin. I poured it into there. And now there is a layer for me to set all my stuff on. For the mold like this, it has a curve to it. So I always make sure to pour a layer in so then there's a flat surface for me to lay the stuff on. For this one, I didn't have to. I just did. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, this doesn't have anything in it yet. We're going to cut all of the pieces and all that and get that part ready after I pour another layer of resin in here. I'm going to arrange my pieces in. I'm going to pour some more resin and when it hardens up, we're going to go in with the pieces that we cut out, which we will do here in a little bit and fit them in there and go from there. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get my resin mixed up and then pour it in there and we'll move on and get ready to cut all these to fit them into the molds and the bezel. So I got some resin all mixed up and now I'm going to drop it into my molds that already have the one layer that I put in before. So now I'm going to get ready to position my charms in there and I'm just going to use a toothpick to move them around to where I want them to be. So I'm going to take the mushroom and like I said before, I want to have that hanging out at the bottom. So I'm going to put it in there and move it all the way to the bottom. And then the fairy, I want her like right by it, almost kind of like touching it. So I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to position it like so. Oh, 
Okay, now with the serotonin, I'm just going to put one here, one here, and the heart in the middle. I didn't really know what to choose for the pink background. That was a hard one for me, so I figured I would just go with these. Did you know that most of the serotonin in your body is actually in your gut and not your brain? I think that's pretty fascinating. On that note, I'm a psychology major and I go back to school in two days, so I think I'm excited about that. I don't know. All right. So that looks pretty cool. So now I'm going to put these aside. Actually, you know what? I want to put more and I want it, the reason I'm going to put more is because I want it to be a flat surface because the next time we're going to come in with resin, we're going to have the piece of material that we cut out and we're going to put a thin layer of resin and we're going to kind of like squish it into that. And I think it would just probably be smart if it was a super flat surface. So now when we put that other piece in, it will just, it'll fit on there nicely. So now we're going to put that aside, uh, let it harden up until tomorrow, and we're going to move on to actually cutting into the pencil cases and the fanny packs. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cut these up to get ready to use them in the pieces. So I'm going to take some scissors. And I've already cut up a fanny pack, uh, like I showed earlier, I have used some of that material in some other projects, but I'm going to do it again just to kind of show you how that all went down. So last time I just kind of started at a seam. So I noticed this last time with this one and I'm seeing it again. The inside is this kind of, it's like felt kind of fabric-y, cottony material. It's not plastic like the outside. That kind of caught me off guard, but that's what's going on with that. Um, it didn't affect the resin or anything like that in any weird way. It's just, it is what it is. So that's what the inside of that looks like. So now I'm going to move on to the pencil case. I have not tried cutting into one of these, so I don't know what. Oh, okay. Well, it's exactly, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's that felt kind of material. All right, then. Yep, it's the same kind of stuff. Okay, let's see if the pencil case is that, too. Okay, it is also that same plastic on the outside, felt kind of material stuff on the inside. They are all the same in that sense. Good to know. Okay, well, now that I know what's going on, I'm going to cut just some smaller pieces to work with. So for the heart piece with the fairy and the mushroom, I'm going to be using this this is a piece that I put, or that came out of, rather, that exact mold. It was going to be some project I never got around to finishing, so whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it, use it as a template. I'm going to cut this out, and then we'll be more precise about it in a little bit. But we're just working, or getting ready to work with more reasonable chunks of it. Okay, so that's going to be that. The serotonin and the heart piece is going to be this pink material and it's going to be this exact size. Here is, oh, here's another piece that's that exact size. So I'm gonna... And for the fanny pack material, that was gonna be the little sacred geometry seed of life pendant thing. And what I like about these particular little bezels is they have like a lip. The walls don't go straight up, they kind of curve in. And that's really handy because when you put the resin in there, you can't see the very edges. So if they're a little bit sloppy or ragged or not as perfect as you want, it hides it very well. I love these pieces that have the 
curved walls. So that's what we're gonna use. This is a piece of fanny pack I already cut up. I don't know if I just said that. Should I just say that? Whatever, I already cut up some fanny pack and have been using it. This is that. Okay. So now that we have the easier pieces to work with, what I'm gonna do is, now that I know they're all the fabric, um, what I've been doing was taking a Sharpie and tracing around them, but I think with some of them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an ink pad and I'm gonna stamp them. So with this one, I can do that. So it's, cause it's super absorbent. And if I use the Sharpie pen, and I will for one of them so you can see, but if I use the Sharpie pen, it just sucks it all up. So I'm gonna try just stamping it. So we're gonna use this as the template so we have the right sized piece to go into the mold when that time comes. So I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stamp it. Cool, okay. With this one, um, I probably could stamp it like that too, but I'm, I'm just gonna trace around it. Maybe, no, I think I'm going to. See, these are tricky though because I'll get the stamp imprint right here, but it like it's a little bit wider the farther in you go, so I don't think it would be really the right fit if I did that. Um, so I'm just gonna do this. So I'm just gonna take my Sharpie and trace it around. But you see how the Sharpie pen just sucks up into that material? That's what's going on there. So with this one, I'm not gonna do the other side because I wanna see, well, I don't, yeah, okay. While I was off camera, I decided to re-stamp this one because I didn't do it right that first time. So that's what went on there. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to cut out our little template from the rest of the material. And you want to make sure to be inside that black line. You don't want to be outside of it because this will help ensure that your piece fits in the bezel or the mold. Cool, that fits in there. So that should fit into our mold with the serotonin charms in it. So now this is gonna be the one that's gonna fit into that little stainless steel bezel. And that one looks a little bit wonky, but let's see. Oh yeah, okay. All right, so that fits in there nicely. What I'm actually gonna do in a little bit is I'm gonna take this back out and I'm gonna drop some resin in there and then squish it into there. And it's just because I feel like it makes it adhere a lot better. And this material will get air bubbles because it's like a fabric. So I feel like by putting some in there and then squishing it down and then casting the other part into it the next day might help with the bubbles, but I have no idea, to be perfectly honest. It's just something I've been doing. So now we're gonna move on to the heart. Okay, it kind of fits in there. It's a little bit wonky, but I'm just gonna do some cleanup. But you, you have the basic idea of what I did now. Okay, so I put my gloves back on and I pulled this piece back over here because I think I'm gonna try and put this in here before the layer hardens up and then I add more resin and put that into it just to see what happens, but for now, like I was saying, I usually will take a drop of resin. Well, by usually, I mean I've done this, this is like my third time I've done it now, but this is what I've been doing. So just taking a drop of resin, and then taking the piece of material, 
So that's what I've been doing for that. I'm gonna finish that and clean it up a little bit. So that's in there and that's good to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see what'll happen if I just drop this in while the resin is still wet. Yeah, I think that might work out okay. Yeah, there's a couple of air bubbles on the other side. That was my main concern. Yeah. All right, well, it is what it is. So we're gonna leave that to sit. And then, yeah, I'm gonna wait to put this into the fairy mushroom one. So I guess that is it for now. We will come back in the morning, add the charm to this piece and add the last layer of resin and put this into the fairy piece with another layer of resin and all that jazz. So I will see you tomorrow. It's the next day and I'm going to pour the next layer into these. And do you remember yesterday when I tried to put this holographic background into the piece before the resin had cured? It ended up being a disaster. It was so bad that I had to take the holographic piece out to save it. It moved the charms underneath it. There was air bubbles. It was too heavy. So it started to kind of like droop down on the sides. It was, I do not recommend that. Um, if you're gonna do this, do whatever you wanna do, but I regret trying what I tried yesterday, but at least now I know. So I have my pieces and I'm gonna get ready to do all that. I have my bezel and I have my little sacred geometry charm that's gonna go in there. This is what the charms looked like before I, I trimmed off these little edges. I just took some nail clippers, clipped off those edges so it can fit in there. So that's what's going on with that. And I'll leave the link for the description for all of this stuff that you can buy in the description box below. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and pour my next layer into my pieces. So I'm gonna start with the bezel and then just kind of get it out of the way. So I'm gonna take just a little bit. The resin I'm using is Super Step CCR. If you have any questions about that, I have a tutorial that is a demonstration where I work with this stuff. I love this stuff. And if you have any questions about the process of mixing and measuring the resin, I also have a tutorial called Resin Basics for Beginners. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and go check that out and it'll get you up to speed if you're brand new to this. Okay, so that looks good and it's gonna spread all around and do its thing. So I'm gonna just put it off to the side. I'm gonna cover it with a cup so no debris gets on it, but yeah, that is good to go. So we're gonna put that aside and let that cure. So now we're gonna do the next layer for these guys. So the resin's all hardened up, so I'm gonna take just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm gonna spread it around. I made these molds myself. If you are interested in trying to do something like that, I have a tutorial called How I Make My Clear Silicone Molds. Go ahead and check that out. Okay, so I think that's a good amount. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a lot. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just squeeze it into, what is that blue thing? Oh, it's just lint. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze this into the resin that I've poured. I can take my stick. And I really want to make sure that there's no air bubbles on the other side. And usually with this technique, there's not. I'm pretty good about squeezing all of them out. So that one's okay. The fabric stuff is just gonna soak up all the resin. That's all good and well. There's gonna be another layer that's gonna happen that will cover all that up and it can just be whatever color you want. So it doesn't really matter what is going on with that or what that looks like. So now we're gonna do the fairy and the mushroom. Oh yeah, I already put the resin in there. All right, so I'm just gonna put that in there. All right, and that is it for this layer right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until that hardens up enough to put the final layer. And that's just gonna be some resin that I mix up and color and then go in there and you'll have a very finished piece or finished looking piece. So yeah, I guess I will see you in 
uh, probably about 10 hours. This stuff takes a good amount of time for it to get to the point where you can pour another layer onto it. It's a pretty slow curing resin. So yeah, I'll see you then. Bye. Okay, so it's later in the day and it's time to pour the last layer in. I worked ahead a little bit. I just mixed up a batch of resin and added some pigment to it for this purple one. It's Queen's Purple Mica from Brambleberry.com and I'll leave the link for that in the description box. And then for the green, I used this neon green pigment from TKBTrading.com and I love this stuff. It's a little bit harder to mix in though, like sometimes there will be little specks that you have to work at to get out. With micas you don't have that problem, but this is a different kind of thing. So that rainbow one, I just wanted to finish off with a purple because the other colors are represented pretty well, but I don't think that there's really a lot of purple happening in there. So this is just to kind of to finish that rainbow. Okay, now for the green. I really like green and pink together, so I thought this would be a cool color combination. We'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, so I'm gonna let that just spread out and do its thing. I'm gonna take a lighter, well, I probably shouldn't do it in gloves, but I'm gonna take a lighter to the top to get rid of those bubbles here in a little bit. And then I will see you tomorrow when we pop the pieces out of the mold and see what they look like. So I will see you then. Okay, so it's the next day and it's time to pop the pieces out of the mold. The pieces are completely cured. Um, I don't need to wear gloves. The only reason I am is because I was pulling weeds yesterday and my hands got all cut up, like more cut up than they were and who wants to see that? So whatever. Um, I This is the piece that we made with the fanny pack and the sacred geometry and whatnot and that came out pretty cool. We of course knew what to expect because I showed you pieces that were already finished. So we're gonna move on to these now. So I'm gonna start with the serotonin heart one here. And let's see how that looks. All right, so that one came out pretty cool. I like that one a lot. And now this one, I'm super excited about this one, so let's do this. Ooh. Oh man, that one came out really cool. I'm super excited about this. I think I'm gonna make a bunch of these ones. So what I'm gonna do next, and I'm not gonna do it on camera, I'm just gonna do it on my own, is I'm gonna turn these into magnets. I'm just gonna take rare earth magnets and put them on there and they'll be good to go. So I guess that concludes today's video. Um, I hope you learned a lot. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and commenting and all of those things that go with YouTube. I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.